This video tutorial is going to walk you through on how you can use Turning Point with our student response pads. Now it's important to note that if you do not have this program installed on your computer, you will want to contact the computer support department here on campus for them to install it on your local machine. Now on this computer I don't have Turning Point out on the desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and go down to my Start menu, and then you'll notice I have Turning Point right here. Now you can link it to your desktop if you'd like for easier access. Now it's important to note that if you were to simply open PowerPoint, you're not going to get the Turning Point functionality with it. So it's important that you do open Turning Point and not PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Turning Point. And you'll see here that I have a couple different options. I've got PowerPoint polling, anywhere polling, and self-paced polling. I'm simply going to go over PowerPoint polling for this video. Uh, for the other two options, um, if you do have questions on those, feel free to contact me in the cell department. So I'm going to go ahead and click on PowerPoint polling. Now what this is going to do is this is going to open PowerPoint for you. Um, but you're going to see now we have a tab up at the top that says Turning Point. So technically you could do a simple PowerPoint presentation without putting any Turning Point slides in and it would work just fine because you'll notice we do have that functionality um, amongst the top here with the different tabs. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and expand this out and I'm going to explain the different features here within this Turning Point tab. So the first thing we're going to look at is this new area. What this is is basically a new question that you're going to put in for interactive polling. You'll notice we've got multiple choice, short answer, numeric response, true, false. There's a whole list of them. And what I'd recommend doing is if you're interested in what they might do, just go ahead and insert uh, that type of question and mess around with it and see what it does. Um, I'm not going to go through and explain everyone in this video, uh, but there are a bunch of different options that you can do in there. The next box over is objects. Um, what you can do here is uh, you can add different objects into the turning point slides. Um, so you could do a correct answer indicator so that after you've polled your students, something will come up to show what the correct answer is rather than you having to say, yes, the correct answer was B or whatever the example might be. Or you can put countdowns in here if you want to just give them 30 seconds, whatever the case is. And again, I'd recommend just messing around with them a little bit. Throw them into your slideshow and see if you like it or not. Again, all of these will add to active learning. It just depends on whether or not you use them properly. And then the last box over here is the compete. And this is just a way to do different competitions for students. Um, and as I've said in the last two, feel free to mess around with them. See if you like what they have to offer. Um, these are a great way to get students involved um, and competing against one, each, one of each other. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add in a new question slide here. And I'm just going to do a multiple choice just for ease here. So you see it looks very much like a regular PowerPoint slide. Um, so what we're going to do is we can enter the question text. So I'm just going to say 2 plus 2 equals question mark. We're going to go ahead and put in our answers. So A will be 1, B will be 2, and again I'm just hitting the enter after each answer. So 3 or, oops, not 54, 4. Okay. So now I've got all my answers in. I can go ahead and just click anywhere on the slide. I'm just going to click on the... Uh, over here on the chart. So now you'll see we've got our four answers here. So here's one, two, three, and four. Those are our answers. If those were word answers, uh, each word would appear there instead of the number. Um, and then uh, the chart, which is going to show uh, the student's response when you're all done. Okay. So when I just click on the slide, you'll notice this blue box appears over here. I'm going to move it around a little bit here. And basically, these are the preferences for this specific polling slide. So if I hit the arrow next to each one of these bolded options, I get different uh, selections that I can choose from. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to make this anonymous, which to note, um, if you just rent out the student response pads, it's going to be anonymous because they won't have a name attached to that specific response pad. So you don't have to usually worry about that unless you're specifically using a turning point list of students. You can change your bullet format. So if I don't want A, B, C, or D for my answers, I could do uh, lowercase, um, or I could just do numbers. Uh, now this would be confusing if I did numbers because now you'll see over here, question one is the same as the answer. So that could be a little confusing. I like to stay with A, B, C, or D um, to label it out. Okay, uh, you could do multiple responses. So that if the students want, they, you could do a question that has two answers. 
Um, that's up to you. Scroll down a little bit here, the polling options. I like to have this first one selected. Basically what this means is when you're in your slideshow presenting, as soon as you come upon this slide, the polling will automatically open rather than you having to hit another space bar or a right arrow click. The next box below, I would recommend having highlighted as well because that's going to show the results after the polling or you could do during. Okay. The problem with doing, oh, sorry for this middle menu, I'm going to close this out. The problem with doing during polling would be if you have students that just don't know the answer, they're just going to sit there and wait to see which one's probably gathering the most answers. So after polling is probably the best choice. Okay. If you select first response only, by default, students can keep clicking answers until you close the poll. And to close the poll, it's just another space bar after the right arrow click. Uh, I'm going to switch this back to after polling. Okay, correct point value really isn't going to matter um, unless you have these specifically uh, for students, like if the clickers are assigned to a student. Otherwise, point value doesn't matter if you're just using this for interactive slides for your students. And then you could go ahead and click your correct answer. So for this one, D is the correct answer. So we'll select that and hit correct. And then it'll default to making the rest of them incorrect. So those are the different options that you get per slide. Um, these options will change based on what type of question you've put in. Um, and they will change for every question. So you would have to set these up for each question. So if we go back to the top, I'm just going to mention a few more things up here. Uh, before you start, your presentation when you take this to class um, I would always hit this reset button what this will do is make sure that uh, so if you do a reset session what this will do is make sure that all of your um, charts are back to zero percent um, and ready to go when you are inside of your PowerPoint presentation okay so let's just say we have this one question that's all we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and go into our PowerPoint presentation we're gonna click to our slide now I've only clicked it once and when I've gotten to this slide you'll notice up here in the top right we have a green screen that says polling open so as students click in with their response this number right here will start to accumulate so once you know all your students are in you can go ahead and click the space bar or the right arrow key and that's gonna end polling now for this example I didn't have any students respond so that's why everything says zero percent but uh, all the students responses would accumulate here and you would see based on the graph that you have who guessed what so I'm gonna escape out of that and then the last thing I'm gonna note is that you can save your data so if you click on save and do save session uh, it will save the data that you've done now it is important to note however that it's only going to really be a, cl a class data since these probably won't be specifically set to students, you're not going to be able to analyze specific student answers and stuff like that. You're only going to really be able to analyze data for the entire class. Um, if you are interested in using this uh, with specific students per clicker, please contact Justin Frisk in the cell department, um, and I can get you set up with that. Uh, but it's just it's more uh, instruction that I'm going to leave out of this video for now. Um, so feel free to contact me if that's something you would like to do, and I will get you set up with that.